Over to our top story of the day. FIFA's brand image has taken a major hit in the wake of the latest corruption scandal. The world governing body is facing the wrath of former greats and UEFA is also calling for the resignation of President Seb Blatter. Flesh, fresh elections are scheduled for Friday, but will they go on smoothly? What next for Blatter? What next for FIFA? More importantly, can the governing body restore some trust? Here's a look at what happened today. FIFA President Sepp Blatter missed the medical conference in Zurich after the world football body was rocked with multiple arrests. Blatter, gunning for his fifth time at the helm of FIFA, has not spoken publicly since the arrest took place. President Blatter apologized not to be able to come today because of the turbulences you have probably followed in the media. Blatter did issue a statement saying he welcomed the investigations into the body that will help it get rid of any wrongdoing. Blatter is facing calls to resign and pull out of Friday's presidential election after a number of officials were taken into custody by the Swiss police. UEFA, football's European body, wants the elections to be postponed. The members of the UEFA Executive Committee are convinced that there is a strong need for a change to the leadership of this FIFA and strongly believe that the FIFA Congress should be postponed with new FIFA presidential elections to be organized within the next six months. Moi, je pense que la la raison serait, puisque je crois que l'élection est prévue dans quelques jours. There's a further condemnation from former football greats. Calling Sepp Blatter a thief, Diego Maradona said he was relieved with the investigation and is glad that the FBI has finally told the truth. Even Brazilian great Romario slammed FIFA over these corruption charges and said hopefully this action will benefit the game in South America and Brazil. The sponsors too have come down hard on FIFA, issuing a statement. Coca-Cola said the lengthy controversy has tarnished the missions and ideals of the FIFA World Cup. Meanwhile, the Russian president has blamed the US with meddling with FIFA in a bid to take the 2018 World Cup away from his country. Putin has said that it feels odd that the probe was launched at the request of US officials for crimes which do not involve its citizens and did not happen in the United States. Now the FBI have begun their task of nailing down more officials involved in this scandal by conducting raids at the CONCACAF headquarters in Miami. This could well be the storm that engulfs FIFA for a long time to come. Sports Bureau, India Today. Let's just give you a sense of how deep-rooted this malaise and this corruption could be. Let's take a look at the people that are involved in this entire scandal. This is a chart, a flow chart of how the FIFA works. There's a president at the top, which is Seb Blatter, senior vice president, eight vice presidents. Out of this, Jack Warner, Eugenio Figueredo and Jeffrey Webb are three former or outgoing vice presidents that have been caught in this net. So that's quite a high hierarchy of individuals that have been caught in the net. And that's not all. Uh, Charles Blazer of the United States, Nicholas Leos of Paraguay, and Eduardo Lee of Costa Rica. These are all members of the executive committee members that have been part of this entire scandal. The ones in yellow signify the ones con convicted. The ones in blue signify the ones indicted. Daryl Warner. Now, these are, this is the list of other FIFA officials, not of the rank of the vice presidents or executive committee members, but the others that have been caught. These are four states... These are four state officials and heads of these uh, uh, various agencies, Nicaraguan, Venezuelan, Brazil and Trinidad and Tobago. Now, this is a list of the sports marketing executives that have been caught in the net as well. These are not FIFA officials, but of course officials that have been caught in the net, probes into the 2018-2022 World Cup bids as well. These are members from Brazil, Argentina, the US, Argentinas, uh, from Alejandro, Burzako and Mariano Jinkis as well. Now these are the 14 individuals that have been caught in the net. Uh, six of them top uh, FIFA officials, three of them uh, either former or current vice presidents. Uh, 
Let's go across to our guest now, our consulting editor, Borea Majumdar, has been tracking developments uh, of the FIFA, the football governing body closely. Borea, if I could ask you first up, uh, the reaction that FIFA has ha given so far is really far from ideal, isn't it? Uh, regardless of, you know, despite such high officials being involved, they're not taking any blame and not even looking to shake up anything. That's what uh, has been the story of FIFA for ages, Shivani. 2010, exactly the same thing happened. But this time round, there are certain differences. I don't think Sepp Blatter will be able to say crisis, what crisis, and get away. That's what he said in 2010 when he awarded the bids to Russia and to Qatar. But this time, if you see, the clamor is growing. And as you said about five minutes back, Michel Platini saying he's asked Sepp Blatter to resign. He's clearly the second most powerful man in world football, Michel right. Platini, as head of UEFA. And that is why this crisis is now becoming. I mean, politicians involved, US Secretary of State, French politicians, British politicians, Britain in any way is against Sepp Blatter because they did not win the bid. So overall, if you see, the clamor for Blatter to resign is growing. And within Zurich, he's canceling meetings, calling closed door meetings of his confidants. So clearly, for once, Sepp Blatter is feeling the pinch. But whether or not he will pull out of the election, no one really Knows. You know, as you speak, Borea, the latest updates that are coming in from Zurich is that Blatter is uh, promising to power on for his re-election bid for yeah, the fifth time. Exactly so despite Michel Platini asking him to step down just a short while ago, you know, there was a meeting, a secret meeting held between the six confederations head in Zurich. Uh, nobody knows what they discussed, but I believe that's when Michel Platini told Sir Blatter to step down. And this is the reaction coming from the, uh, the president that he will soldier on and he's not willing to back down. That's exactly what Sepp Blatter is all about. That's, you know, Shivani, yesterday on the show I said the same thing. I don't think there will be even a contest because if I know Sepp Blatter and, and, and in my but personal But I believe Prince Ali is fighting times, against him and Mikhail Platini has resolved his, uh, has uh, said that he will back him. Doesn't matter. You know, if you really know FIFA politics well, Sepp Blatter is too far entrenched, Shivani, to lose an election. I mean, he has incredible amount of clout within the body. However much public opinion you and I can say it's corrupt, the 209 votes that matter will still favor Sepp Blatter. That's the reality of the world governing body for football. And unfortunately, Sepp Blatter will win. You know, however much Lineker and Maradona and these people say he's not good enough, the fact is he still has the numbers within FIFA. Right. Just for the information of our viewers, uh, Prince Ali bin Al Hussein is really uh, Sepp Blatter's challenger. He's the only one left in the race after the likes of Luis Figo withdrew from the presidential elections and the the, the party opposed to Sepp Blatter, especially in the uh, in the wake of this controversy, are vowing to back Sir Blatter's uh, challenger. But more importantly, uh, you know, you talked about the the politics of uh, FIFA, Borea, what should FIFA do to restore faith? Because it's not just about the presidential elections, you know, it's also about sponsors, uh, faith, it's also about fans' faith in the body. Here are two World Cup bits that are under the question. In fact, three World Cup bits with the 2010 South African World Cup under question also. Absolutely. But, you know, that's what has been the nature of sports bodies, isn't it? When uh, it happened with the uh, Olympics in the 1990s, 98, with the Sydney bid, what did Samaranj do? Reforms Commission appointed, chapter closed. What happened in 2010 with Seth Blatter? He said, crisis, what crisis? I don't give a damn. I mean, and he went on. Tomorrow, once he wins the election, you know, his second, Jerome Valke, Seth Blatter, these people, they'll just power on. The fact is, they have the numbers. I mm. mean, unless you admit there is a crisis, and Blatter will not admit there is a crisis, because then... He would have relinquished position. How right. do you expect fans' faith to be restored? How do you expect reforms to be undertaken? And, you know, how do you expect the game to be cleansed? The media can say what it wants. Right. As long as the 209 members favor Blatter, it's all hunky-dory within FIFA. Prince Al Hussein claims he has the support of 60 members. We'll just have to wait and see how these elections go on because as of now, they are going on regardless, despite all the controversy. David Kilpatrick is joining us over the phone line from New York. He's associated with the New York Cosmos and also someone who uh, keeps a close eye on uh, FIFA developments. Uh, David, what do you make of the staunch defense that FIFA as a body and Sepp Blatter are giving in the wake of this controversy? They're not willing to postpone elections and they're not willing to, uh, Sepp Blatter is not willing to withdraw his uh, candidature. 
Well, I think that's exactly what they have to do. First of all, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to discuss this with you and Gloria. But uh, I, I, I'm not surprised in the least bit because any confession uh, would immediately lead to relinqu- relinquishment of power. And, and if they step down from power or step aside in any way, they're far more vulnerable to prosecution. Uh, if they keep control, then they're, then they're less likely to uh, have to you know, pay the piper, if you will. What do you think, David, the FIFA really ought to do to restore faith of fans and of the public at large and its, you know, its own body members, several of whom are standing up against Seb Blatter now? Well, it, yesterday was a bit of a shock, but it was also like a, a, a big whiff of uh, fresh air coming into the room or the, uh, the possibility of, of getting the bad air out of the room, the stale air out of the room. Um, so one thing that we're seeing uh, at the grassroots level here in the United States now is people directly contacting the sponsors. In other words, you have to hit them where it hurts, and where it would hurt would be in the sponsorships. Uh, this is all about securing the sponsorship and sponsorship dollars. So if the, the large multinational corporations that uh, help fund this, uh, this repute uh, second-guess their associations, Guilt by association is a very powerful tool. So uh, that's one thing we're seeing at the grassroots level, people individually contacting those corporate sponsors and saying that they're upset by their association. Right. David Kilpatrick, thanks a lot for joining us from USA. Borea, final comment to you. Uh, how do you see this shaping up? Because the U.S. authorities are uh, gungo about making even more arrests and they're not going to back down. Russia has got into the mix of claiming a conspiracy. And FIFA seems to be completely, you know, in a zone of its own where it's going to go on like nothing has happened. They have banned some officials, I believe, after the arrest. But that's hardly any action right now. Correct. I think you summed it up nicely there. The last two sentences that you said is ex- exactly the ground reality at this point in time and will be the ground reality tomorrow if I understand FIFA well. Mohammed bin Hammam was the casualty in 2010 because he opposed Blatter. In that chart that you were showing and Darian Warner, Daryl Warner, Jack Warner, the entire Trinidad belt is gone. You know, a couple of these officials will pay the price, but they've made enormous amounts of money, Shivani, but nothing will happen to Seb Blatter. I'm innocent till proven guilty is the slogan that Blatter will talk about. Right. However, much anybody opposes him it's going to be set platter tomorrow in that election Borya Majumdar thanks a lot for joining us let me go across uh, to Arunava Chaudhary a football expert joining us from Germany Arunava what do you make of the developments and uh, what does Germany feel overall as a very powerful football body and country about what is happening in the world of football Good evening uh, back home to India. I think uh, in Germany the view is very, very similar to that in England. Um, they want blatter out, but um, you have to differentiate who is speaking about it. If you hear the German Federation President Wolfgang Niersbach, he's a little slow on actually openly saying that Mr. Blatter needs to be out. Uh, the media is much more direct. Uh, there have been uh, reports on what's been happening in Qatar. Uh, people are critical about the, the World Cup uh, topic regarding Russia. So it depends on where you are. And if you talk to the general public, of course, everyone wants him out. So that's the status at the moment here. But right. I think you have to differentiate who you speak to in what positions they are. Let's tackle the problem of the World Cup bids as well. I know this is very, very difficult to just take away the bids or reopen bids. But should that be a reaction that FIFA uh, should go for? Should they reopen bids for Russia and Qatar? It's a, a very, very tricky situation. I mean, I had spoken to people in, in the middle of 2010 hmm. uh, around the South Africa World Cup where people clearly said that the World Cups in 2018 would take place in Russia and 2022 would place, uh, take hmm. place in Qatar. And I think there are a lot of different questions that need to be asked, especially the political scenario in Russia at the moment, uh, the question of, of workers, of migrants in, in the Middle Absolutely. East. I think that should be a topic for the government of India to really take up with its neighbors. Uh, because uh, the people from South Asia have actually built the Middle East over the last 50, 60 years. Uh, so the question is, football is an easy thing to jump on right. and to use. And I think that is what's happening at the moment. All right, Arunava, thanks a lot for joining us and giving us inputs from Munich.